So I'm going to talk to you about Pentecostal spirituality theology. Så jeg vil gerne tale om Pinsens budskab med hensyn til teologi, theology, og åndelighed. Uh, most of you know that I teach theology at Southeastern. And my specialty, my discipline, is Pentecostal studies. So I thought maybe it would be good for us to talk about Pentecostal identity. What does it mean to say that I'm a Pentecostal? Well, first and foremost, it means that we're Christian. I mean, we, we want to be identified as followers of Jesus Christ. So, by saying I'm Pentecostal, I use it as an adjective. It describes the, the form and spirituality of my Christianity. Det beskriver min form og min åndelighed som i min kristendom. I'm, I'm not Lutheran. Jeg er ikke Lutheraner. I'm not a Lutheran Christian. Sådan er jeg ikke. I have nothing against Lutherans. Jeg har ikke noget mod uh, Lutheraner. I'm not a reformed. Jeg er ikke reformeret. I'm not reformed Christian. Jeg er ikke reformeret Christian. I'm a Pentecostal. Jeg er en Pentecostal. I'm not a Roman Catholic. Jeg er ikke Romersk katolsk. I consider myself to be both Catholic, small c, <laughs> that is connected to authentic Christianity. Um, I'm not Russian or Eastern Orthodox. Although Pentecostalism has more in common with Roman Catholicism and Eastern Orthodoxy. Then it would Lutheranism or Reformed. Often in its understanding of salvation. Salvation is how we understand our relationship with God and our relationship with one another. So Pentecostal as an adjective is reaffirming that we are Christian. But it's also saying we're Pentecostal. So we also use it as a noun. So this is kind of tricky. It's nobody questions. Roman Catholic as a tradition. Or Reformed as a tradition. Or Lutheranism as a tradition. But they do question whether or not Pentecostalism should be seen as a distinct theological tradition. Just as Reformed or Lutheran or Roman Catholic. Is everybody following me? You understand what I'm saying? Okay, good. Um, even in the States, there's debate about this. Some will say we're just evangelical. Well, evangelical in the United States is, has a very different and more narrow understanding than evangelical in Europe. Yes, and so it, it becomes it becomes a particular kind of Christianity. And um, I would part of my burden has been is to help to liberate 
Er at frisætte. To free up. Og, og, og gøre fri af. The Pentecostal tradition. Den pentecostale tradition. As and recognized as a distinct tradition. Til at blive erkendt som en helt speciel enartet tradition. And as I said, it's difficult because it's relatively new. Det er svært, fordi det er relativt nyt. I mean, it's roughly a hundred and some years old. Altså, godt og vel, hundrede eller andet år gammel. That's young. Det er young, det er old. Christianity's been around for 2,000 years. I betragtning af kristendommen har været på cirka 2,000 år. If we rightly recognize that Christianity Hvis vi betragter kristendommen is a continuation of the people of God of the Old Testament er en fortsættelse af Guds folk fra det gamle testamente. It's been around for a long time. Så har den været endnu længere tid. But uh, Pentecostal, as we understand it today, men pinsen, som vi forstår den i dag, is relatively young. Er relativt ung. And one day my son said to me, en dag sagde min søn til mig, Dad, my friend is a Jehovah Witness. Han sagde, at min ven er Jehovas vinde. And he said, I told him we are Pentecostals. Og jeg sagde, at vi er folk. Hallelujah, way to go, son. Ja, yeah, godt, ja, godt, godt. <laughs> we are Pentecostals. Det er, hvad vi er, vi er pisse folk. And then he says to me, just exactly what does that mean? Så sagde han, hvad betyder det for mig? And it seems that I have been spending most of my academic work on answering that question. So I'd like to offer you a definition. And then I'm going to unpack that. Um, so Pentecostalism is a global Christian tradition. So tradition. You can find Pentecostal Christians all over the earth. Pentecostals value transformative experiential spirituality. In Transformative experiential spirituality. So what does spirituality mean? Spirituality is about our worshipful response to God. How do we respond to the living God? That response is manifested in our way of being living with God. Og vores svar er vores udtryk for, hvordan vi lever, og hvordan vi har forholdt os i forhold til Gud. Our spirituality is manifested in how we live with other people. Og vores åndelige deklaration handler også om, hvordan vi lever med hinanden. Our spirituality is manifested in how we interact with and care for God's creation. Og det gælder også i forhold til, hvordan vi forholder os til Guds skaberværd. So spirituality gives us purpose. So åndelighed giver os formål. It gives us direction. Retning. It is a very intimate relationship with God. Og det er en meget, en meget intim forbindelse med Gud. In this way, Pentecostalism På denne måde, der er pentekristendom is similar to pietism, Lutheran pietism. Er faktisk er sammenlignende med den lutheranske pietisme. In this way, we too believe also på denne måde, tror vi, in a very personal, intimate relationship with God. En meget personlig og intim forhold til Gud. And that spirituality moves us to prayer. Og det er en åndelighed, som driver os til bøn. Moves us to worship. Driver os til tilbedelse. A worship that involves the mind, the cognitive som er en, en tilbedelse, som kalder hele på vores erkendelse. And also um, ignites our affections. Og antænder vores følelser. That is, Pentecostals are people who love God. Pentefolk er folk, der elsker Gud. Amen. And they're going to love people. Som elsker mennesker. In radical ways. 
Play the radical in, in, in radical ways. So Pentecostalism is a global tradition. So um, the Pentecostal is Johannesian. That values transformative experiential spirituality. So we are saying that the the forbidden on the What holds Pentecostalism together? Det som holder hele pinsebevægelsen som sådan sammen is a common dynamic er en fælles dynamisk synergistic a synergisk understanding of salvation forståelsen af frelsen we express this dynamic vi udtrykker denne dynamik um, so understanding of salvation i forståelsen af frelsen through our confession. I call it our doxological confession. Of, of Jesus. We know Jesus is our deliverer. Jesus is our sanctifier. Jesus is our healer. Jesus is the spirit baptizer. Jesus is the king that's soon coming. We call this a full gospel. It's a whole gospel. It kind of lays out our journey with God. We begin that journey knowing Jesus as our Savior. We become born again. And we start on a journey with God. And God's people. We become a pilgrim people. And we have a definitive goal. We know that Jesus is coming. We believe God is coming. And we're looking forward to that coming. As we travel together. So we have a destiny. We have a goal. We are a people in pilgrimage. And along this journey. God cleans up our lives. So that we may love God more. So we can ask God more. So that we could be freed up from sinful activities. So that we could be freed from sinful activities. So we're on this journey together. We rise together. Pentecostals globally are held together by this doxological confession. And the pinsen tanken bliver holdt sammen af denne tilbedelsesidé. It's a whole gospel. It's full evangelium for all of creation. As well as for us individually. So we we understand that um, we forstår. We understand that our encounter of God. At vores møde med Gud, vores samhæng med Gud. And our understanding of God. Vores forståelse af ham. Doesn't fit easy in a modern world view. Ingen ikke passer så godt ind i moderne verden. Um, we really do believe there are other spirit beings out there. Vi tror på der er andre andre åndelige kræfter. We recognize there might be angels. Vi taler om engle. We recognize there could be demons. Er det kunne være dæmoner? I have come across a few. Jeg har jeg stødt på nogle. Sometimes they're in my classroom. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, I believe in deliverance. Og jeg tror på udfrielse. First and foremost, we preach the good news. The kingdom of God is at hand. This is a declaration of the power and presence of God. That is clashing and overcoming the demonic kingdom. The earth is under what we call the the functional lordship of the demonic. But we believe that it is the Holy Spirit, not demonic spirits, 
not corrupted human spirits. Og heller ikke korrupte menneskers ånd. But the Holy Spirit. Men den endelige ånd. That wants to take up residence in our lives. Der ønsker at flytte ind og bo i os. So that we would be the temple of the living God. Så vi kan blive templet for den levende hovedens. So Pentecostalism values these transformative experiences. Så det er det, at Pentecostalismen den er satset på at respektere disse forvandlingsmuligheder. It proclaims a full or whole gospel. Forkynder et fuldt og helt evangelium. And it's also held together through formative, charismatic experiences. Og den også holder fast på den på den fortsatte karismatiske erfaring. Such as glossolalia. Som tungtale. Healings. Helbredelse. Prophecies. Prophecier. Deliverance. Udfrielse. Those things that we associate with Jesus Christ and salvation. Det er netop disse ting, vi vi forbinder med Jesus Kristus og hans frelse. So, Pentecostalism finds its identity in Acts chapter two. Så der med finder pinsbevægelsen sin sin rod i apostelskæring af to. To be honest with you. For at være helt ærlig. If we did not have the Gospel of Luke and Acts of the Apostles, two volumes of really one overarching story, we would not have modern Pentecostalism as we know it today. So another aspect of Pentecostal Christianity The Pentecostals will see ourselves as restoring and renewing Christianity. In other words, they see themselves as a continuation of New Testament, of the book of Acts. Kind of like Acts chapter 29. <laughs> a continuation. So it identifies with earlier forms of Christianity. And this would be the Protestant influence. To emphasize the scripture. So the, the Bible is, is cherished. So Bible is We, we thank God for the scriptures. We ask the Holy Spirit to help us understand the scriptures. And therefore, it's important for us to realize that if it wasn't for the book of Acts, there probably wouldn't be a modern Pentecostal movement. That does not mean Nej. there wouldn't be charismatic forms of Christianity. Christianity has always had signs and wonders. Certain kind of extraordinary moments where we see God work in a very special way vi ser Gud virke på særlige måder. And we would probably walk away from that saying this is a miracle. Og vi ville betragte det som mirakel. There would there was and there will be these kind of charismatic forms of Christianity. Og der vil være disse former for tegn på by, på på Peter Christendom. And by charismatic I'm talking about signs and wonders. Når jeg taler om det karismatiske, så taler jeg om tegn der under. Giftings of the spirit. Og udgivelse af ånden. But sometimes it's difficult for Pentecostals to hear what I just said. Men er det er faktisk svært for pinsefolk at forstå, hvad det er, siger. That there would be no Pentecostal movement today, as we know it. Der ville faktisk ikke være en pinsebevægelse i dag, som, som vi kender den. If it wasn't for the book of Acts. And why is that? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Acts chapter 2. 
When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. So, Pentecostals, we like to have a scripture for almost everything we do. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that some of you might have a life verse. A, a special scripture? Anybody? A few of you? Yeah, very important. Something that the Lord has revealed to you. It's, it's kind of like a, a promise from the Lord. In the States, it's not uncommon to find a Pentecostal who has a business and the name of the business sometimes is lifted right out of scripture somehow or it has a scripture reference after the name. The point is the Bible is very important to us. Very important. But we do recognize it's second to God. We do believe the Spirit still speaks today. And this is what makes other traditions a little nervous. We believe the Spirit still speaks vi tror, at ånden taler endnu i dag. And has more to say than just scripture. Og som har andet og mere at sige end blot skriftord. That is, the Spirit just doesn't quote a scripture. Og det er fordi Helligånden citerer ikke, ikke bare sådan skriften. But what the Spirit does say. Men det han gør Helligånden. Is going to be consistent. Er noget vedvarende. With the teachings of Jesus. Hvor vi forkynder ud fra Jesus. Consistent with the scriptures. So, we're talking about Pentecostalism. How should we understand our Christian identity? As a Pentecostal, we are going to articulate our understanding of salvation. The same way Thomas did in John's Gospel. Det samme som ordene der sker i Johannes Evangelium. Do you remember how Thomas responded to the resurrected Lord? Kan I huske hvordan Thomas han reagerede i forhold til den opstandende herre? What did he say? Hvad sagde han? Do you remember? Help me. My Lord and my Savior. Yeah, my Lord and my God. Oh my God. Is everybody saying it? No. Hey. <laughs> this is a quieter form of Pentecostalism. <laughs> Europeans tend to be a little bit more quieter. And that's okay. That's a good thing. Some of our Some of our Pentecostal communities could use a little quietness. <laughs> I've been in some services. <laughs> two, three, four hours. <laughs> They're just having church. <laughs> I think I'm having a heart attack trying to keep up. <laughs> I'm, I'm exaggerating, but... <laughs> my Lord and my God. Min herre og min Gud. His response was born out of a relationship. Og uh, hans altså taler Thomas, hans udtryk var båret af en relation. Pentecostal theology is born out of relationship with God. Mm. Mm. Og uh, vores pentecostal teologi er, er en frugt af vores forbindelse med Gud. And it is very much shaped Christologically. Og den er, har en, en kristus skabning, en form i sig. So we hear these worshipful statements. So we hear these here wichtig bekendelser. Jesus is my savior. Herren er min frelser. Jesus is my peace. Jesus er min fred. Jesus is my healer. Jesus er min helbreder. Jesus is my deliverer. Jesus er min frigør. So what I'm trying to say is so det jeg forsøger at få frem her er that Pentecostal spirituality at Pentecostal is, is very pietistic. It's, it's very intimate. 
It's very personal. Meget personligt. But it's also connected to community. Men det er også forbundet til samfundet. Our relationship with one another. Og vores indbyrdes forhold. Some of the key themes that come out of our spirituality is a particular story. And that story is lifted right out of Acts chapter 2. We, we agree with Peter that God's Spirit is being poured out in these last days. So Pentecostals would often talk about the early rain so, uh, and then the latter rain of the Spirit. I don't know, have you heard much of that? No, some, it depends. Yeah. Very little. It was more prominent in the early phase of Pentecostalism. It was faktisk mere almindeligt at vi har talt om det i den tidlige del af Pentecostalism. There was a resurgence in the 50s and it became known as the Latter Rain Movement. There was a research in the 50s on what do you call them? The Latter Rain Movement. Oh, so see, if I want to tell them, see the right bevation. But this lifting is that. The Lord is pouring out His Spirit in these last days. We are the people of the latter rain. So God is pouring out His Spirit. This particular understanding is coupled then with the full gospel. So when a student says, do you know we're living in the last days? I say yes. Yes. We have been living in them for 2,000 years. <laughs> but we're still looking forward to the coming of Jesus. But I know what that student is saying. He's talking about, or she's talking about, the 2,000 years of church history. And Pentecostals see themselves as part of this latter rain outpouring. That God is pouring out His Spirit in order to have this great harvest. Pentecostals tend to be very optimistic. Very hope-filled. We know that God is able to do anything. And sometimes our prayers are asking God to do the incredible. We are very hope in the sense that God not only has saved me, but will save my family. We pray for people at work. We, we share the good news of the gospel because we want others to experience the pouring out of the Spirit. So, so our theological identity is really shaped by our spirituality. So the task of a Pentecostal theologian, the task, is to tease out that spirituality. Tease it out. Pull it out. Draw it out. Draw it out and then try to articulate it. And that's what I'm trying to do for you today. So I want to identify a few more themes. Our understanding of salvation. How does God have a relationship with humans? We know that our salvation is brought to us through Jesus Christ. Jesus is our atoning sacrifice. Jesus is our atonement. From the incarnation to his ascension. We don't deny the importance of the cross. It is a pivotal moment. A pivotal. 
In the Trinitarian uh, life of God. So our understanding is God's grace initiates. So vores forståelse er at Guds nåde øh, ansender. So that we might cooperate. Så vi kan samarbejde. We believe that whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord. Og vi tror på at enhver som påkalder Jesu navn. Shall be saved. Skal blive frelst. But they cannot call on the Lord in their own humanity. God will enable them through grace. A grace that is vulnerable. Because God, that, that grace that God gives can be resisted, can be, can be rejected, Always. can be abused. In, in God's grace will work, Guds nåde vil but God asks us to work with His grace. So those of you that might have some backgrounds in, in theology, this, this would be more consistent with Wesley and Wesleyanism. Og der er det her, der kan vi have øjne rette hen på Wesley's um, idéer. So it's a, another theme is this bodily worship. En anden ting er det at tilbede med sin krop. We believe that we are going to encounter God. Vi tror på at vi skal mødes med Gud. We become radically open to the presence of God. Og åbner os fuldstændig ud for over for Guds nærvær. And we anticipate that God will work. Og vi forventer, at Gud vil gøre det sit arbejde. And this anticipation generates hope. Og denne forventning skaber håb. We also believe in holiness. Og vi tror også på hellighed. Without holiness, no one shall, shall see the Lord. Uden hellighed kan ingen se Gud. What do we mean by holiness? Og hvad mener vi så med hellighed? Sometimes the early Pentecostals were concerned about dress codes. Uh, de tidlige kristne var meget optaget af, hvordan man klædte sig. Um, I would be in big trouble <laughs> if it was 1920 <laughs> and I was in the United States <laughs> preaching in a Pentecostal church. They probably wouldn't let me preach. I would have to get a haircut. <laughs> I violated the dress code. <laughs> At college, because my hair hit my collar once. So I wear long hair. So my wife protests. <laughs> to stand in solidarity with all you women who have short hair. <laughs> we do believe in holiness. Holiness of the heart. And it should be manifested in how we interact with others. So holiness is about sanctified relationships. So Godly relationships. Sanctified relationships. Godly relationships. The Pentecostal community is usually more intimate. Sometimes we express it with warm greetings. We can for example utrykke det med et varmt, der hilser varmt på hinanden. Um, depending where I'm at, if I'm in the global south, as for at if you are here, if you are in here in the global south, or the global north, eller mod nord, there will be. Um, there will be different ways that Pentecostals will greet each other. But within their cultural context, it's generally seen as more intimate. Sometimes people are even uncomfortable by the warmness that is shown. Sometimes. Sometimes. Maybe not always. Also, Pentecostal spirituality, theology, lifts up another theme. 
Så også den der pentecostale uh, åndelighed og spiritualitet, der teologi åbner for flere muligheder. It's very missional. Den er missions. We know we have a purpose. Vi ved, vi har et formål. It's to love God with all our heart. At elske Gud af hele vores hjerte. All our mind. Hele vores styrke. All our soul. Og hele vores sjæl. All our body. Og hele vores krop. We take the greatest commandment very serious. Og vi tager det Gud meget seriøst. And we also want to love others. Og vi ønsker, vi ønsker også at elske andre. Even as Jesus taught. Og Jesus lærte. That means our enemies. That's a little bit more challenging. <laughs> but it's part of this whole gospel. It's part of holiness. Holiness is perfecting in love. That's all it is. It's not a dress code. <laughs> Although it's probably a pretty good idea to have some clothing. <laughs> it's not a list of do not, do not, do not. It's a call to radically show God's love. And that means we become vulnerable. But it's in those moments that the holiness of God is manifest among us. So we're missional. So we're missional. We love God. We worship God. We worship God. But we also know that we're called to a mission. Men vi ved også at vi er kaldet til and, mission. And that mission is nothing short than the continuation of the ministry of Jesus Christ. Og den opgave vi der får er intet mindre end at forkynde. This is what the book of Acts is about. It's pouring out of the Spirit on the people of God so that may, they may be capable of carrying on the mission of Christ. So, this mission goes clear back to Genesis 1. We are to care for God's creation. And also now we are to proclaim the good news of the gospel. Because we are God's people. And as God's people, we are ethnically diverse. Der er vi uh, i etnisk uh, forbundet. And this is very good. Og det er godt. God creates with diversity. Og uh, no, ja, det er forkert oversat, men altså Gud tager en mandfolk. Det handler om mandfoldighed. God creates in color. Ja, der er farvet folk. It can even be somewhat culturally diverse. Og kulturelle forskelle. But we're united in Christ. Men vi er forenet i Kristus. And we're woven together through the working of the Spirit. This makes us a particular kind of people. And our mission is to share the good news. As we um, come together as God's community. I'm, I know they're live streaming this. <laughs> they're live streaming. No, no, the camera. Okay. Uh, I'm a little discouraged. Uh, it's <laughs> I'm convinced that a lot of evangelical Christians in the United States are looking to Trump to make them successful. To make them great. <laughs> What we need to be as Christians is to recognize that God has set aside the church to, to be the redemptive presence of Christ on earth. It is through these communities, redeemed communities, that we manifest the goodness of God we share the love of God. 
hvor vi deler Guds kærlighed. We call people to responsible living. Og vi kalder mennesker til at leve ansvarligt. God doesn't say, oh, I love you, just go do whatever you want. Gud siger ikke, jeg elsker dig, gå bare ud og gør, hvad du har lyst til. God says, I love you, come. Jeg elsker dig, kom til mig. Follow this way of life. Og følg den her livets vej. This is a good way of life. Det er livets gode vej. You can live the other way as you want. Du kan selvfølgelig gøre livet, som du vil. And those will bring on their own consequences. Og det får så konsekvenser for sig. So, kind of in conclusion. Så hvordan afslutter vi her? Pentecostal spirituality Pentecostal is a passionate love for God's kingdom. We're called to worship God and to be God's witnesses in the world. And as we are God's witnesses that comes up before God as right worship. Der kommer det frem for Guds ansigt som tilbedelse. And when we gather and worship together, og når vi tilbeder sammen, as the people of God, som Guds folk, that worship in and of itself, så tilbedelse i sig selv, is a witness to the world. Er et vidnesbyrd over for verden. We are called to be God's people. Vi kaldes til at være Guds folk. So, what does it mean to be Pentecostal? Så hvad betyder det så at være pinsfolk? Yes, it does include things like tongue speech yeah. and healing. Det indebærer selvfølgelig tungtale og helbredelse. And deliverance. Og udfrielse. It involves important practices. Så det involverer nogle seriøse måder at leve på. Like looking out for those who are less fortunate. At holde øje med de som er mindre lykkelige, mindre heldige i livet. Those As the Old New Testament identified, those who are in economic struggles, the orphan, the widow, the foreigner. De som er i økonomiske vanskeligheder, den den forældreløse enken. It's about loving one another. Det er at elske hinanden gensidigt. In godly ways. På Guds måde. In good ways. Den gode måde. So we have. At this time, a break coming up. <laughs> and everybody said, Amen. Amen. <laughs> yes, hallelujah. We love fellowship. It's important. So let's do that. Thank you.